significant other. Aliens send their top agent to Earth to prepare the planet for terraforming, so he pretends to be a human and hits sharks. The film opens with a burning, unidentified object crashing into the forest. A deer watches this unusual phenomenon and becomes the victim of an unknown creature. Meanwhile, a car rushes along a cozy forest road. Ruth and her boyfriend Harry went on a trip to go hiking. Harry tries to cheer up the girl, but she doesn't feel safe. We learn from their dialogue that Ruth likes surfing more, and in the forest, she is seized by an inexplicable anxiety. Ruth and Harry have been in a relationship for six years, and for the guy, this hike is an opportunity to move to a new level. The couple stops at a roadside cafe to have breakfast for the last time in a civilized place. Everything goes on as usual. Ruth studies a naturalist's guide with a description of the park's plants and animals, but breakfast is interrupted by a boy apparently the son of one of the employees. He chooses an awkward excuse to talk about the fallen meteorite. Communication with him raises the degree of anxiety and Ruth begins to get seriously nervous. But Harry persuades to continue the trip and now they are already delving into the majestic forest. However, after the fall of the red thing, this is not a very kind forest, but should tourists worry about meteorites? The guy entertains his girlfriend with stories about his first kiss, promises to protect Ruth. At the halt, he prepares dinner and entrusts the girl to set up the tent. But Harry also has to put up a tent. The girl cannot understand how to do it. At night, Ruth gets up to relieve herself and is frightened by something in the forest. It seems to her that she saw a deer, or it doesn't seem, but Harry explains, there are a lot of deer here and they love to look at people. In the morning, Harry takes his beloved to the cliff from where a fantastic fantastically beautiful view opens up. The guy talks about his feelings and proposes, but Ruth, being in an unstable emotional state, suddenly suffers a panic attack. The girl eats pills while Harry looks for a place for himself, struggling with failure. Ruth's mild mental disorder is the second main character of the film after nature. Her nervousness will once serve her a good service. In the evening at the halt, the couple quarrels. Harry believes that Ruth's refusal is due to her psychological problems. The girl asks to accept her point of view. Ruth is afraid of marriage, but she is ready to live without registering a relationship. Harry believes that Ruth's parents' divorce and the girl's inability to accept the help of a psychologist are to blame. Fortunately, they do not burn all the bridges, but simply go to bed. In the morning, Ruth finds a note. Harry went for a walk. The girl decides to call her doctor, but there is no connection. In search of a place where you can call, the girl leaves the camp and even dials the clinic number, but does not find the strength to speak. However, looking around, she discovers everything that remains of the deer. The skull is neatly cut lengthwise, and it is unclear who or what could have caused such damage. In addition, the skin is covered with some kind of blue slime. Ruth is terrified again, but Harry unexpectedly finds her. The guy calms the girl down, examines the remains, and in the evening at the halt, shows in the reference book the disease of the deer, trying to finally calm his nervous girlfriend. The conversation again comes to the topic of marriage, and it seems that the couple is concluding a temporary truce. In the morning, Harry prepares breakfast, and Ruth goes into the forest on her business, but suddenly finds a small grotto. On the floor, the girl's attention is drawn to the already familiar blue slime. Ruth sees something and turns around. Meanwhile, Harry eats alone, glancing at his watch. Soon the young man goes in search, and his efforts are quickly rewarded with success. Ruth stands in the forest, calm but alien. After some time, the couple stops for the night, and already at night, Harry wakes up alone in the tent. He again looks for his girlfriend and stumbles upon the girl, or rather, Ruth tries to stab Harry with a knife, but stops in time. She explains the knife in her hands by her fear of the beast. After returning from the cave, the girl becomes more and more strange. She no longer sleeps, and in the morning when Harry talks about his prospects, he does not react to his words. The guy is ready to despair, but then she agrees to marry, only makes the condition that he must repeat his proposal on the cliff. They come to the edge of the forest, which overlooks the ocean. Harry, under the guidance of Ruth, makes an offer, and the girl accepts it, allowing her to put on the wedding ring. She kisses her lover, but suddenly attacks and pushes him off the cliff. Having enjoyed the lifeless body on the shore, Ruth runs through the forest, runs for a long time and finally falls from fatigue. 
After some time, she is found by tourists, Ray and Vivian. The girl is covered in abrasions and bruises. She is clearly dehydrated. Tourists want to call for help, but there is no connection. After giving the girl a drink, they invite her to join them at the halt. Ruth portrays amnesia, saying that she does not remember how she got into the forest and what she is doing here. The tourists are no longer happy with the unexpected meeting, but decide to continue trying to solve the riddle of the stranger. Vivian tries to talk to Ruth, but it's all in vain. The girl only watches the knife that the couple has. Finally, the tourists decide to look for a way to get in touch with help. While they agree, Ruth manages to get hold of the knife. Ray and Vivian think that she will now attack them, when suddenly Harry appears. Since his death, he has changed a lot, and it seems that his body has been possessed by some kind of entity. Harry quickly deals with Ray and follows the girls. Having lured Vivian, he wounds the poor woman, and he gives Ruth an ultimatum that he will kill Vivian if she doesn't come up. However, he does not keep his promise. Now the plot changes, and it becomes clear that Ruth has long understood that she continues to try travel not with Harry, but with someone else. There, in the cave, she saw the remains of the real Harry, and her murder plan is an attempt to save herself. Now that the cards are open, she awaits an explanation from the new Harry, and the guy says that he is a scout from another planet. He conducted a survey of the area and must report the situation. However, Ruth will not find out how it all ends, because she must die. But Harry quickly realizes that he cannot kill her, because the body he captured has very tender feelings for Ruth, and while the scout realizes his new emotions, Ruth runs away. Harry pursues the girl and catches up with her, but she has already managed to arm herself with a log. The stranger continues to explain his condition, and the girl, seeing that it will not be possible to hide, goes with him to the beach. There, Harry shows his ship, and Ruth notices sharks near the shore. The stranger reports the imminent capture of her world and offers to fly away together to a quiet, safe planet. The girl agrees, and then, seizing the moment, stabs Harry with a knife and lures him into the water. The shark comes on a bloody trail and attacks the stranger. Ruth runs again. Meanwhile, Harry manages to get ashore, defeating the sharks. The girl somehow finds the camp of Ray and Vivian. The tent and things are in place, but Ray's hand also lies where he lost it in a fight with a stranger. Ruth again surrenders to a panic attack, eats the last pill, and falls into the hands of Harry, or rather tentacles. The alien places Ruth in a cocoon in a cave. He will soon transform Harry's body and take Ruth's place in her life. The stranger spews out a philosophical monologue about love. He gradually turns into Ruth, becomes her exact copy, and the girls seem to have already given up. But seeing herself, she suddenly remembers all her weaknesses, telling the enemy what awaits him in reality. The girl talks about her fears, pains, experiences that the stranger received along with the body. She does this with great feeling, pouring out in her words all the hatred for her own helplessness in front of the cruel world. The stranger suddenly himself falls into a panic attack, and the magic pills are over. Ruth manages to free herself from the cocoon, pretending to be sympathy. She misleads the alien and manages to inflict several injuries, which, in her opinion, are incompatible with life. Ruth gets out of the forest and gets behind the wheel, but how do we know that this is the real Ruth, because the alien now looks exactly like her? It's simple. The girl put on her jacket when she got out of the cave. A radio in the car starts to make noise, and Ruth hears the voice of a stranger who starts to threaten her. The car leaves the forest, and the sky is lit up by many ships flying to the ground, and at this point, the film ends. 